The CWL Week 6 is upon us, guys, and the league table is starting to take shape. Today, we have the final two hours of Elite Gaming versus OneHive 2.0. It is going to be an exciting matchup, guys. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I am your host, Judo Sloth, for today. As you can see, Elite Gaming have quite a few more attacks here than One High 2.0. The 10v10 record is slightly better as well, so it is going to be an interesting finish, guys. We're going to flip across to other wars as well, because as you can see on the league standing and the fixtures for this week there are some amazing matchups Spartans Legacy versus One Hive. They have their backs up against the wall. Let me tell you, they are undefeated at this point, but One Hive giving it all that they have got. But we're here for Elite Gaming versus One Hive 2.0. Welcome everyone that is just joining the stream. How do you like the new overlays? I've been working on this pretty much all weekend to give you guys statistics, to give you guys the league standings. We can jump in and out of other wars, but let's focus on the Elite Gaming versus One Hive. We have plenty of replays for you, and without, without actually diving straight into this, we have a live attack. And there it is. It does look like it is an 11v10 here for One Hive 2.0. And they're really hoping to push the score up as best as they can. Like we said, you can see from the attacks left that we have 17 versus One Hive's 9 following this one. Elite Gaming slightly better off with that second win, but One Hive 2.0 have had a less amount of matches. We are slightly better in the league, so this is a very, very important match for both clans guys as you can see with the bow which coming forward the king has been locked onto by the single target inferno which is not going to be good for this attacker um but sorry guys i am just trying to uh get to grips here with all the technical stuff it's the first time i have done all of the league tables and things so i hope you do forgive me but as we get back into this attack obviously dip attacks 11 v 10 we can expect the three stars to happen and the bowlers nicely kind of split off onto both sides for this one coming around the ones on the left here are taking massive damage though the queen does have that ability and the healers have kind of made their way over to the bowlers and witches on the left i think this one is in the bag pops that queen ability to try and get some of these defenses down on the back end so i will try and keep up with the chat i do see people joining all of the time so welcome to the stream like i said trying something a little bit different today made sure to have the scoreboard there for you if i forget to update it forget to put a score on there make sure to give us a shout out in the chat just to kind of remind me just because it is the first time that i have done that so let's go ahead and we can knock one attack off for one hive they only have nine attacks remaining now compared to Elite Gaming's 17. And it is another 11 v 10 triple. So we need to go ahead and edit that one, guys. And then we also need to update the score a lot more than I was anticipating. Aaron, welcome. You are a part of the stream here. What do you mean you can't join? Yeah, thank you, Usagi. I do appreciate that. Let's jump back across to our stats screen then, just to kind of update you on the league as a whole. Every single week, I tend to bring you the Elite Gaming War, but we never really look at the, the league itself and the standings of everyone. We're going to try and do that today. So as you can see, Elite Gaming sitting quite nice here. You can see, actually, let's move to the stats for this war. We do have a better 10v10 hit ratio. As you can see, we have 9 10v10s versus 1 hives, 7, and our 10v11 ratio, that is getting the 2 stars, is a lot superior. It is level pegging right now, but we do have eight more attacks i mean how crazy is that creative dude welcome to the stream aaron as well thank you so much i am vic welcome back my friend uh vic that is what you want to be called i do remember that so let's go across to the league itself then so 
This is after week five. Elite Gaming sitting in 10th position. One Hive 2.0 sitting in 14th position, but they have played one less. Um, let's flip across to one of the other wars, and the one that has really got me excited at the moment is the one against Spartans Legacy. So they are undefeated currently, guys, but as you can see, One Hive really are pushing them. The attacks are pretty much similar but look at that 10 v 10 rate for one hive 14 successful attacks out of 25 i have to tell you a little bit earlier on in the day as well obviously i've been keeping up to date with all of the matches i believe one hive was something like seven for ten absolutely amazing uh scrum welcome to the stream mariam welcome to the stream as well um so this one is going to be an exciting finish. Finish only 51 minutes remaining for Spartans Legacy and One Hive. Will it be a comeback for Spartans Legacy? Let me know what you think in the chat. Or will One Hive come back and make sure to get victory on that? It's a rematch of the semi-finals last year, guys. So let's move back across to Elite Gaming versus One Hive for you. And let's kind of catch up with the chat again. It's the first time. Let me know down in the comments there in the chat. What do you think of the new overlay? I've been working so much on it this weekend to get all of the statistics. I did promise you guys last week that we would get these statistics up for you. So I've gone ahead and done that. It might not look flawless. I am kind of new to this. And obviously I do want to dip and dab out of the other walls as well. So what do you guys think currently Elite Gaming what do you think of our chances? Like we said, we have plenty of more attacks. You can see the rate there is quite a bit better for us. Um, so I think we're looking pretty good right now. Prince, welcome to the stream, my friend. Mr. Flip, welcome as well. I didn't see your mess. Oh, there it is. Woohoo, judo streaming. Overlay looks amazing. I am kind of keeping an eye on a bunch of different chats here. And... Um, Yes, the, the chat that merges Twitch and YouTube does indeed uh, have a few seconds lag on it. Carl, welcome to the stream, my friend. So this one is a 10v10 attempt for One Hive, really trying to push things forward and try and catch up with us as best as they can. Golem coming in first, and I haven't really had much of a chance, guys, to check out all of the replays prior to this. So I don't know um, what attacks have been on this base, if they're trying to build on an attack. We'll just have to kind of start from now and see how things go. If anyone is over there watching on Twitch, make sure to drop some comments down there as well would be good to know that twitch is working quite well home away welcome to the stream my friend so a very nice jump spell there provides access right into that middle compartment but more importantly down to that single target inferno look at this hog rider as well just sneaking in um not really needed to get that cannon but it was certainly a good um deployment if it can get a swipe or two it is going to be helpful now that the queen is kind of stuck we are going to use the ability but Check this out, the Hog Riders are in quick enough, and that is to try and protect the Queen, guys. If you can get your Hog Riders in, um, you know, very, very quickly, your Queen can be helpful for cleanup. So she does go down on this one, and check out the enemy Queen as well. Standing tall there for Elite Gaming, so not great here for One Hive 2.0. I think that is a defense. Clashing Lava, welcome to the stream, my friend. So let's go ahead. Try and update the scoreboard. I do want to try and keep on top of this for you guys because it is the first time that I've done this and that is going to be a 10 v 10 fail. So we can update the scoreboard there as well. 23 attacks now and 7 10 v 10 successful attacks. Mr. Flick, stream looks great over here. Thank you so much for clarifying that with me. I do appreciate it. And sorry I didn't get to uh, DM you today. I have been very busy, like I said, trying to get all of these uh, streams and statistics and everything going. Leo Gaiman, welcome to the stream as well, my friend. That is a fail for One Hive, and it does mean that they now only have eight attacks left to Elite Gaming's 17. So that is fantastic. Can you do a 10 versus 11 attack? Are you talking about replays? Um, 
I will get to some replays, but what I do want to do is kind of jump across to some of the other wars. That is exactly why I've tried to bring this in. It is 1 a.m. in India, so don't forget to upload this stream yet. Prem Best, it will be uploaded, uploaded after this. You can guarantee that. Jasu, welcome to the stream as well, my friend. Let's pop across to the stats screen then, and let's have a look at One Hive Genesis versus Dark Looters Z. I do have a a bunch of friends in One Hive Genesis, Bisectatron, Smog, a lot of good friends, and they have came out all guns blazing this season and putting on a fantastic show against Dark Looters Z. I mean, Dark Looters Z are one and four this season, guys. That is crazy. They've won one, which was actually against us in Elite Gaming first week, and then they have lost four matches since then basically on percent and the odd star. So as you can see, one half Genesis, 11 for 27 in 10 v 10 hit ratio. That is fantastic, 41%, a little bit higher there than uh, Dark Looters Z. And um, as you can see as well, the 10 v 11 hit ratio, that little bit better as well. But let's jump back across then. We have another live attack by um, one Hive 2.0. And again, I'm just trying my best to keep on top of all of these scores. You guys can, um, you know, let me know if I forget to update the scoreboard or anything like that. Please show some 9v9. I will show that in my recaps. But for the uh, live stream itself, if we don't get to the um, to the replays, then it is just the... Um, it is just going to be the live attacks. Uh, asking about mini clashes all the time. I will just delete you off the stream if you ask that same question every single time. I've answered it so many times. Um, we will be opening in the coming weeks. So this one then, coming forward for the dip attack. And again, one high 2.0, really trying to just get stars on the board here. Avenger, welcome to the stream as well, my friend. Bowlers right into the base here. I mean, I think we can almost guarantee that this is going to be a three star. Bowlers absolutely smart it they do need to get onto that single target inferno relatively quickly the king is about to go down in a second giants are on there actually the the single target is onto a giant i thought it was the king anyway though it is going to be a three star and it's not going to be a problem avenger said nice layout scoreboard looks awesome i do appreciate that my friend really do appreciate that so it is going to be another 11 v 10 three star for one hive let's make sure to go ahead and update that scoreboard before i do forget clashing lava i do play pubg mobile and i absolutely love it i have to tell you it is awesome me and mr flip there were doing quite all right the other night um yes i really do enjoy it so that is now only seven attacks left for one hive 2.0 we have 10 attacks on top of them and we need to update the scorecard there as well don't we guys 115 to 118 there so one hive now in the lead but if we move down the board here you can see that obviously they do still require quite a few dip attacks to clear them tens whereas coming across we have a lot of stars that we can pick up at 11 moving down there's a lot there at town hall 10 as well plenty to clear but again from the 10 v 10 ratio and the 10 v 11 ratio that you can see on the screen we should have a few extra attacks in order to try and get them 11 v 11 triples which is really where the war will be won and as you can see we do have a lot of people at at the top mr flip judo carries me i don't think so my friend pubg mobile the other night you were beast in it i was certainly just the underdog i did catch that guy that was about to snipe you off though which was really good um, let's move back across to one of the other wars then so we can kind of keep up Let me know in the chat as well if you want to get updated on any of the other wars I am going to try my best to kind of dilly and dally out throughout the league because there are some amazing matchups this week the one hour, 45 minutes left, Elite Gaming versus One Hive 2.0. If you are just joining us, this is week six of the CWL. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date with all of my Clash of Clans content. Let's move across then. Let's pick another war. Let's let's have a look at WHF versus Buy Forever. A very important war here for Buy Forever. They really need to try and pick up a victory from somewhere, but WHF have been very impressive. Last week, pushing Spartan's legacy right the way until the end. It was uh, forbidden, sorry, not Spartan. Spartan's legacy it was crazy so as you can see by forever putting up a fantastic match here 
a lot of people riding by forever off but as you can see 10 10 v 10 triples is pretty good obviously not quite as far up in terms of uh, percentage as they would like to um so we do have a few hours left on that one, whereas a lot of the wars are actually wrapping up in about 45 minutes time. A one that really had me before though was North Watchers versus Warzone. So if we pull up that war, guys, you will see actually the tables have turned. When I was looking earlier, um, North Watchers were actually in the lead here, but in terms of the ratio of attacks, they still probably are in the lead. They have seven attacks in the bag over Warzone, so seven extra attacks. You can see their 10v10 ratio is very, very good compared to Warzone, with them only seven Town Hall 10v10. Uh, North Watchers up there at 12 so it is going to be an interesting one if we were to flip back across to the league standings you will see that Warzone up there in third place so that will be a fantastic victory for North Watchers wow this new setup with the stats on all wars yeah thanks Mr. Flip like I was telling you last night I have been working on it for quite some time to try and update everyone as best that I can uh, Sharok, welcome to the stream as with Isaco. I if I don't get to your chat straight away, I really do apologize. I'm trying my best to, you know, give you guys the league and everything that you want and, um, yeah, push from there. But an exciting finish here for Elite Gaming. Like we said, it is an important week for us. We've lost the last couple. Um, last week out to one hive as well so this one against one hive 2.0 really would be a good victory for us get us back on them winning ways get us to three and three and really pushing up the league to that playoff position Ali welcome to the stream my friend three losses in a row I know my friend I know it's been a tough couple of weeks for us, but we're in good stead here. Last week, we really struggled at 10v10 against one hive, but we have really came out firing on this one. Um, as you can see, Cold September did pull out of the league, so Forbidden do indeed get the win on that one. They are right up at the top there as well. Really, really pushing things. Spartans Legacy, the only other clan that are undefeated, but like we said, they are currently up against one hive and really have a lot of work to do. But if anyone can do it, we know that it can be Spartan's legacy. Let's jump into a war we haven't looked at yet. Uh, let's look at Reddit Omega versus Kansha. So I do have my little crib sheet here in terms of the, the wars that I have pulled up. Obviously, a lot of different background work into pulling these up. Kansha starting to find their feet a little bit in the league here. They are pushing Reddit Omega quite well here. Obviously, they have used quite a few more attacks, though. They've really got them all down, only four extra remaining. So Reddit Omega will be able to sit back here and kind of have a good look as to... Um, as to where they can push things, where they can really use their attacks most effectively. And um, yeah, Reddit Omega, as we, as you know, one of the top clans there in the league, so I'm sure they will be pushing things very, very hard. Let's move back across to the statistics from this one. We need to get that subscribe off of here. Every time I flip back across, it's there waiting to flash up for you guys. But hey, why don't we just pop it on there for you if you want to go ahead and subscribe make sure to go ahead and subscribe for all of my clash of clans content um there is the statistics then from this war elite gaming does have the better statistics at the moment obviously sitting quite nice here with 10 extra attacks only three stars behind it's an important war for both clans here we really need to pick up a victory here like we were seeing clashing lava there before three defeats there um in recent weeks. Jason, welcome to the stream, my friend. So how many of you guys, just out of curiosity, have been following the league as well in other, um, in, you know, in other streams, in other weeks, or do you just kind of watch Elite Gaming here with myself? I would be very interested to know, actually. Flipcoin, please let me win. Yeah, like we said, I might even just take that out of the uh, the stream, to be honest, because it does just get on people's uh, nerves half of the time. Um, so, yes, we will get to... Why don't we show you a replay, actually? Why don't we show you a 10v10 bad boy? Another six-pack in this war, guys. Just... 
wow, he is a 10v10 machine with Lava Loon. Like we said last week, getting the three stars twice as well. So another six pack here coming in with his queen charge from the right hand side. I just love the amount of wall breakers he uses. I love how he gets into the base. I love how he carves things out. It's just so, so nice to watch the amount of skill with the wall breakers because it really does take a lot of skill to get them wall breakers in to break the queen where you want. So coming down from the bottom here, obviously bringing the queen in towards the enemy queen. You guys will have to keep an eye down at the bottom there for the live as well, just in case we miss one of them. Getting the enemy queen and the CC all within one poison spell. Spell. Always nice to do when you can slow down that enemy queen and when you can take out the enemy CC at the same time. Rage spell obviously used to push the queen forward there and a few extra wall breakers still in the bag just to push that queen wherever we want to. But again, a lot of the time what you need to do is just carve out an area of the base. King and queen already down at this point. Going to get a couple of air defense there as well. Not quite popping the ability yet. Here is that sneaky balloon, the scout balloon, which will come in and set off any bit air bombs to protect them healers. Show us heroic attacks. This is a heroic attack. I mean, this is a 10v10 at CWL standard. Here you go. As the lava loon portion then comes in from the top, notice how patient he is with the lava loon. This is something that I'm not the best at lava loon, as you guys no, we do have a live attack though, so we will come back to this one, but again, the live attacks are going to take priority, and it is a 10v10 from ourselves here at Elite Gaming. Looks like it is going to be the Bow Witch. So starting out with a wizard um, down at the bottom, Clashing Lava says, do you want a super chat? Hey, donations are always appreciated, my friend, but, you know, we are here to stream the end of it, and, um, you know, if you guys want to donate, it is very much appreciated. But yeah, Halo will be doing the live stream Spartans Legacy vs. One Hive. So by all means, go on over to Twitch. You will get to see. Actually, he'll be over here on YouTube as well. So you'll be able to flip in and out to see the attacks from that one. Obviously, we will keep looking at the score as well. And um, it does look for an exciting finish. For this one, though, we do have the Baby Dragon very nicely going to take out that Tesla down at the bottom whilst the Bow Witch comes in from the left-hand side. And I really like how just a couple of Hog Riders are used here in order to take out out some of the point defense down the bottom because there was just a lot there for the bowlers and witches a couple of hog riders are really going to help take that out and then notice how the bowlers come in from that angle as well to try and help protect them that little bit massive value from that baby dragon down at the bottom brilliant stuff um, the heal spell coming in there after uh, after the giant bomb goes off but they are going to have to beat on a wall here to get through there I'm not sure whether that was uh, obviously didn't have any wall breakers actually so I'm not sure whether that was a you know, an oversight or what, what that was about. Um, but let's see, maybe he felt he didn't have to deal with that. Maybe he didn't feel there was enough damage coming in to even warrant wasting a jump spell. Nice use of the skeleton spell over on the back by that single target Inferno's um, bowlers are indeed going to get that down. I mean, it's not looking too bad at this point. The only thing that worries me is that there are still quite a few point defense. The queen doesn't have the ability and we only have one healer up, but it is looking pretty good, guys. Two bowlers do go after that spring trap. As long as this bowler and witch at the top here can get a little bit of value, which as we're seeing it, they don't get anything, then I think we would have been good to go. But as you can see, there's just too much point defense. I think this is indeed going to be a defense for one hive 2.0. The queen just not having enough healers in order to help as the air bombs go off as well. So there you go. It is in fact going to be a defense. Very nice try. So let's go ahead and update that scoreboard for you guys. Then only 16 attacks remaining for Elite Gaming. We can go ahead and update that. Uh, the score does not change, but the 10v10 ratio goes up to 9 out of 25 for Elite Gaming. Yeah, to be honest with you guys, I can't actually hear the song that's in the background. I have a playlist which is actually going through, um, I, but I actually have it muted so that it doesn't kind of distract me. My microphone doesn't then pick it up. Um, and to be honest, I don't like commentating with headphones on. So that's the reason why I can't actually hear the music that you guys are hearing. But I know it's there. I can see all the, uh, the audio uh, mixer telling me that it is indeed working.
So anyone just joining us, we have one hour and 30 minutes to go. Elite Gaming versus One Hive. 2.0 in the week 6 CWL matchup. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe for all of my Clash of Clans content. Um, show a Town Hall 10 v 10 Bowwitch. We were drinking orange juice again. No, blackcurrant juice, but yeah. I, you know, commentating for two hours, it does take a little bit out of you. So we did have a Bowwitch actually. Um, base number 21 we took out with Bowwitch. So let's go ahead and show that one for you. We need to go back to that Lava Loon as well because we didn't quite finish that one off. So as you can see here, starting with a Queen Walk over on the right hand side and the Bowlers over on the left. Interesting to bring them couple of healers in. Back to the replay, uh, Gamal, I will indeed do that in a second as long as there's not another live attack. The Bowlers are then pushed right the way through the middle here jump spell is going to provide access not necessarily to the compartment with the single target inferno but the bowlers can shoot over and take that down easy enough um i mean from this point it is really just sending the bowlers through the base prince of spain over on twitch welcome my friend i'm glad to see that everything is going okay over there on twitch haven't had too many people unfortunately guys we do have another live attack. I, I'm very, very sorry. We will come back to that Town Hall 10 Lava Loon and the Town Hall 10 Bow Witch, but we are going to concentrate on the live attacks, obviously. This one being a 10 v 11 for One Hive. They obviously haven't had the best of luck with this so far. So let's just see how it turns out. Coming in, sniping off a couple of buildings at the top there. Not sure if that balloon was to set off an air bomb or what, but um, we'll obviously find out as the uh, as the raid progresses. Nice kind of anti two star base here, but he's going to try and carve a bit of a path with a queen walk so that the bowlers can then get in there, probably sideswipe into the town hall. To be honest, let's just see how things go. I mean, it's quite nice in terms of the base being set up so that. He knows exactly where the queen's going to walk here. It's definitely not going to go across to one side or the other. It's easily controlled. Prince of Spain, I'm very well, thank you. Been working all weekend on getting the new overlays set up, so I do hope you guys enjoy them. Um, we do have the statistics screen as well to check in on the other wars, which we will do in a second as well once this live attack is finished. And we are indeed losing network connection, which is not good as we are streaming. Queen going to get a lot of value here. Obviously at 10v11 when 2 star is the game, you don't have to be as concerned about time as you do with the 3 star attack. Obviously you're only going for 50% of the base. Are Reddit Vipers a part of this season CWL? They are in... Um, Prince of Spring can probably help me out here. I think it's Premier they're in. Um, they had an amazing war the other day versus Hindustan. I mean, it was just back and back. I was uh, watching uh, Time to Clash a stream with Adam, and it was just absolutely amazing. So he's kind of created that funnel with the queen, got a lot of percent, and then, like we said, trying to just sideswipe in here with the bowlers, try and just lock straight onto the town hall. The good thing here is that the CC troops have kind of spread out a little bit, and it means he cannot use his poison spell necessarily that effectively obviously has to prioritize the bowlers, try and rush them onto the town hall, but it looks like they're getting stuck on the king. They are going to turn onto that town hall eventually. No, they're not. They're getting caught with all of the CC troops. I mean, that's pretty crazy. They've gone and, uh, they've gone and done it. Um, a very nice attack indeed, but it was looking a little bit hairy there for a while. Uh, they are top of premier. Thanks, uh, Abs. I really do appreciate you helping out with that one. Um, so there we are, one hive 2.0, getting the successful 10 v 11 so let's go ahead and update that scoreboard um before we forget again it's the first time that i'm bringing the scoreboards to you guys so you may have to uh, update me if i forget to update anything that means that one hive only have six attacks left and the score is now 115 to 119 but obviously elite gaming with 10 extra attacks an hour and a half here in order to sit back and kind of just you know 
the attacks in where we need really get the stars where we need and push on from then so yeah i'm not going to be visiting bases in this i am very sorry i tell you what before we check in on some other wars let's quickly go back to that bull witch attack and to that lava loon attack so that you guys can see it i mean we've seen the first half of them so we'll kind of skip through that then you can just see the kind of back end so you did see the queen kind of coming right around the top here the bowlers and witches down the bottom obviously we were just about to get the cc kill when the lava um when the live attack sorry came in so it doesn't look like he has a second jump spell for this back end inferno tower but again the bowlers can get right next to it and directly target it from inside here you can see they don't have to worry it's not kind of situated back a little bit um where they can't necessarily hit it so that one easily goes down the queen walk at the top is oh, look at them bowlers absolute mvp in order to take out that back air defense as well so that the queen and the healers is protected just as I say that, they end up going down. I tell you what, guys, I can see there's a live. Let's quickly skip through the rest of this. It is indeed the Bowlers and Witches that finish off the raid for you. I don't think we need to watch the rest of that one. You guys have seen it. Looks like we have none other than Judo coming in now for the 10v10. And it is a Hog Rider attack. So this is really going to try and get them 10s done so that we can maximize on our 11 games something we weren't quite able to do last week against one hive but hopefully against two hive we will be able to do that Funnel getting created very nicely. I mean, that bowler, I love to see stuff like this. Look at that bowler. Look at the value that's going to get, taking out two of the elixir collectors, creating a massive funnel whilst the baby dragon does it on the left-hand side. Um, heroes coming in in order to take out the CC, gets the enemy queen as well, and then it looks like he is going to just make a push, leave the queen there, almost sacrificial heroes at this point interesting stuff to see how he deals with the enemy queen um but you can see he is gonna let the queen go down and six wizards for cleanup so then the hog rider is coming in from the western side of the uh, of the base yeah prince of spain i actually missed that so i wasn't i i was thinking that it was a wall breaker fail to be honest when i saw there was no jump spell i pretty much was assured that he was wanting to get further into the base does knock the poison spell onto the queen to slow her down a little bit but obviously the hog riders are going to struggle at this point he really needs them to oh it's actually a, a quit so he's gone ahead and quit i'm assuming everything they needed to know about the base was already done um he couldn't reveal any more traps or anything like that um so there's not much point in continuing with the attack went and uh, went and stopped ahead on that one so let's go ahead and update that scoreboard as well that is now nine for 26 um so there we go i tell you what let's go ahead and check in we were talking before about halo streaming the spartans legacy versus one hive war which is really really pushing things let's go ahead and check that one out ourselves actually reddit omega and cancha they're still up reddit omega still have all of them attacks left to go so if we could take that one off then we bring up spartans legacy versus one hive it is going to be an interesting finish guys 24 minutes left but but as you can see 13 attacks for spartan's legacy i mean yeah by all means go ahead and go over to uh halo i'm sure he's he'll be streaming on youtube and on twitch if you want to see some of the live attacks there it is bound to be an exciting finish look at that 11 v 11 game as well one in the bag already for spartan's legacy um we then have two for one hive but the the one hive 10 v 10 game is just amazing 52 percent that is amazing we are going to keep chopping and changing from that because you know spartan's legacy undefeated at this point can one hive go ahead and do it a rematch of the semi-finals last year so let's go ahead pop back across to the large screen here for this 10v10 attempt by chris and as you guys know from previous wars chris certainly has what it takes in order to get the triple he's done it many times live on stream as well duncan welcome to the stream my friend we had the final one hour and 30 minutes again this is that same base where baby dragon gets fantastic value down with that tesla the bowlers and witches coming in from the other side remember it was very close that last time let's see he has put the jump spell in slightly uh, central into the base this time not quite accessing directly the uh, the single target inferno on the left and bringing in a lava hound as well towards the uh, towards the air defense interesting i'm not sure whether that was the yeah i'm really not sure what that was to be honest I mean, it's going to protect the healers a little bit, but I really don't know. Anyways, 
Bola's coming in, taking out that single Inferno. Heal spell on top of them, but they are going down relatively quickly. I can't really see how many are left there, but there's not too many. Uh, heal spell kind of needed as they move through that next compartment. Doesn't have it, though, and they are going down very quickly. Obviously, the Queen still has the ability, but last time, remember, the Bola's got to this single Inferno very quickly. Got that down, and as you can see on this one, it is just going to be too much. Hopefully, the Queen can get through a few more buildings here. He is going to have to pop that ability to get through the single target inferno which it is going to get through and the interesting thing here guys is that there's a lot more healers left obviously that's what the lava hound was for i didn't get to see how many bombs it set off but i don't think it was too many i think it was just one air bomb it does protect them healers though which is very very interesting and hopefully the queen can survive this she's taken massive damage for oh she's actually got out of the way would you credit that guys one healer does go down over on the left this is interesting the queen now actually can get through these storages have a little bit of time to heal up before she has to go back over to that deadly area so quite nice that the high hp storages were there to allow the queen that little bit of time to heal up she does need to get onto that archer tower fast though i mean that's the main thing which is going to help here but 25 seconds i think it is going to be a time fail guys you can go ahead and put them defenses in the chat is not going to be a triple but a very nice attempt there by chris of elite gaming does indeed go ahead and just finish because he's not going to do it 85 percent um so the score remains exactly the same again we do have plenty of 11s left that we can use to dip um, so not too concerning there, but obviously if we can get that base done with a 10v10, it is going to be very, very helpful. So 14 attacks left for Elite Gaming, only 6 for one hive. Stefan, welcome to the stream. Hi from Serbia. Well, hello from Serbia. So what I think we will do actually before we check out on any of the other wars is show you that lava loon that we didn't get to finish off. Which one was it again? I think it was base number 11 that we showed you, wasn't it? By Bad Boy, which we said six pack in last war, in this war. He's just an absolute beast, guys. He really is. So we kind of got the start of this. The queen came down, um, managed to take out the king and queen. The enemy CC actually didn't take out the queen, did he? It was just arrived there. Hi from India. Vams, welcome to the stream as well. Let's quickly kind of skip through this because if another live comes in, I don't want to be coming back to this replay over and over again. So yes, did get the enemy queen, did get the enemy king. Used that balloon in order to take down one of the air bombs. AJ asks, what does 10v11 mean? That means getting the two stars onto a Town Hall 11 as a 10v10. Um, obviously, two stars are kind of what you want on the board so that you can then maximize on dip attacks and then use the 11s in order to, well, maximize on 10v10, then use your dips to clean and then maximize on 11v11. So the 10v10 is the two stars. 10v11, sorry. Yes, Town Hall 10 versus 11. Anyway... Haste spells pushing right the way through in order to get the balloons right the way forward here onto that um, air sweeper. And then another haste spell. Look at the line of haste spells there. The, the way that I love um, Bad Boy's attacks is that he just narrows the base. He takes down so much so that the balloons can then just literally go from one defense to the next. And he can push his spells right the way across that. So as you can see, they are going to come across. I mean, it's not even going to be close. Swag's a rage spell. Balloons as well are going to get that archer tower or they know they don't but obviously so many pups and minions queen with the ability easy easy stuff but we do have another live guys flying in here only five attacks left for one hive after this but this is a fresh hit so if they get this one obviously it's an 11 v 10 um they will then push themselves to 122 it is going to be that bow witch combination. One healer used on the left hand side here. There is a lot of point defense here to be fair for only one healer, but there's no air defense there. Uh, could have potentially used a queen walk around there, but he is going to push all of the heroes into the middle. A lot of ballers coming through here. Obviously, you have that 20 extra troop capacity at Town Hall 11, so it is amazing stuff. Lava Loon in the CC, not going to be an issue for him. Poison Spell gets that balloon down. And then just look at how many ballers are left over. Look at that giant bomb gets decent value, damaging a lot of the ballers, as does that wizard tower before they go down, but there is just too many of them left alive. 
alive king and queen with the ability it is indeed going to be the three star make sure to go ahead and drop that in the chat um and i'm actually going to go and start updating the scoreboard because I think at this point it is guaranteed to be the three star attack so that is going to be 122 for one hive 2.0 um the 11 v 10 game puts them to seven out of seven obviously you can expect that elite gaming losing our first dip attack here for the season that is our first fail at 11 v 10 for the season and we're into week six so guys that is impressive stuff scoreboard should be already updated there 122 versus 115 but nine extra attacks for elite gaming we are still sitting very well here let's go ahead and check out some of the other wars that are going on i can't donate from serbia hey don't worry about it my friend at least you can hang out and watch the end of the war here let's jump across and see how things are looking um move back across to our statistics page we'll first have a look at spartans legacy versus one hive the thing about the uh the war match website is it only updates you can see updated 13 minutes ago and there's only 16 minutes left so if anyone is able to jump on over to halo stream and come and update the chat with the scoreboard that would be very appreciated because as you can see the scoreboard will indeed be a little bit further up obviously there is 15 minutes left one hive still doing fantastic there after absolutely amazing i screwed up my war attacks today hence we lost hope you guys win oh that you know everyone fails their attacks from time to time i failed to both of my attacks in my war yesterday but that's just that's just how it is unfortunately let's move back across to one hive genesis versus dark looter z as you guys know i am a big fan of one hive genesis i do have friends over there so i am really rooting for them and they are doing amazing i mean a lot of people despite dark looter z's position and record of four losses they are you know pushing for a playoff place let's face it the statistics that they put up but one hive genesis 11 for 28 out of 10 v 10 obviously dark leader said a little bit behind there but they do indeed have seven extra attacks so can they put them to good use there is an hour left on that war it will finish a little bit quicker than our war itself uh, but one half genesis obviously looking very well there if we move across to the league table you will be able to see that one half genesis up in sixth position three wins one loss they did lose out on a single star as well and they had the percent on that war so it was very very close the one that they lost um let's move back across to war uh, whf versus buy forever actually because that is a one that i am interested in keeping up with uh couldn't get the the league table off there and it looks like whf is still very much in the league buy forever on the back pedal there going to have to pull something out in order to get the victory but let's move back across to the main screen it is this dreaded base again it looks like we are indeed going to continue pushing with the bow witch the guys obviously feel i mean it was very close that last one wasn't it the queen just didn't quite have enough to get through let's just see how this one goes again i love that baby dragon at the bottom just to take out that tesla it is amazing on the live stream that you guys get to watch these attacks over and over you get to see which ones um you know come through and which ones really do start to push things forward so there's a couple of extra hog riders on this one in order to get through get that tesla i don't think they get much more than that in fact they didn't even get the tesla this time but he does indeed allow access into that single inferno so that's an adjustment already that they've kind of brought the ballers that little bit closer so many skeletons here the poison spell is hopefully going to get them down the heal spell used already but notice how it's a little bit further in in order to tank for that giant bomb when it goes off as well there it is so the bowlers get healed through that so nice little adjustment there um obviously as you saw last time the single target inferno shredded a lot of things the skeleton spell was used to help to tank it does go down but the queen is all alone down here banging on a wall what is wrong with her healers are over on the borders and witches not necessarily a bad thing if they can get around the base but we would have very much preferred them to stay onto the queen she is going to continue to do a little bit of clean oh they're over on the king come on what is going on here queen is indeed going to go down in a second i think to that wizard tower which is very unfortunate bowlers and witches not doing great around the outside i mean would you credit it that 
that the healers lock onto the king if they'd have stayed on the queen we had that guys the king is going to struggle to obviously get through all of these wall compartments um can you show some town hall nine bases that didn't get three starred um no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that because one i don't know of any i haven't gone through all the replays um and it's not really fair to be doing that so okay what we Spartans Legacy 129, 100, uh, 127 to 129 One Hive. Thank you for the update there. King just not able to get through this. The healers cost him the triple scrum. You are indeed correct. Um, that was a triple. I liked the uh, I liked the uh, the change on that as well. It looked really good until the healers decided to go onto the king. So not quite not quite uh, what we wanted there. Obviously, Spartans Legacy turned table on one hive. Yeah. I, I'm interested to see how it finishes. Obviously, I've been keeping an eye on that war mainly throughout the day, and One Hive have indeed been uh, really pushing them. Um, and, you know, very much the underdog in that war, shall we say? You know, Spartans Legacy were definitely, I mean, they're 5-0. Just looking at the league table there again, uh, they are 5-0. and all. Let's move out of that war, bring up the league. So they're doing fantastic. Um, and as you can see, it hasn't quite updated on this score either, but kindly from the viewers updating us on the one hive score there as well will be a very interesting finish i can't wait it is only 10 minutes so you guys will get to hear the war ending of that um i wish war match would update a little bit quicker but i can't complain too much it is an amazing website guys um let's move back across to the main screen here and just have a second before we wait for the next live attack kind of catch up on the chat here a little bit So how are you guys feeling at the moment for Elite Gaming? Obviously now we do still have quite a few extra attacks, but we've utilized quite a few trying to get that base down because we basically have it. We have it in the bag. Um, we are going to take an 11 v 10 attack here. Um, and it is obviously the bow witch. I mean, it's more of a mass bowler, this one. Look, which is around either side. It's a nice um, longitudinal base so that we can use the bowlers and witches around the outside and really focus all of the bowlers into the middle where all of the defenses are. Not a lot around the outside that will affect that bowler witch combination. It'll just mean that our bowlers in the middle will have their fire concentrated through the base instead of shooting to the buildings on the outside. So I do see that there's another live attack going on. We will kind of see how this one turns out once we start getting to the end of the raid and we know if it's going to be a triple or not, we can then go ahead and kind of back out. I mean, it's looking great at this point, but the bowlers have all gone down in the middle. King has been locked onto, but we have so many golemites coming forward there. Can that wizard... Oh, it jumped into the giant bomb. That is such a crying shame because that wizard would have took down that single target inferno. It's not going to matter because the queen is going to get that. I mean, it's not clear cut here, guys. There's plenty of bowlers here, actually. I think it's absolutely fine, to be honest. So many bowlers and witches around the outside. So let's move across, try and find out where the other attack was. It was indeed Fog using a dip attack as well to try and just smash the scoreboard up here a little bit. Catch us up on scores. I'm going to knock the attacks left down to 11 because that is two attacks that we have used. And then hopefully it is two Town Hall 11 v 10 three stars, which I'm pretty sure it will be. This one looks absolutely fantastic by fog uh shift tc i couldn't agree more good stuff um you know these guys have wrecked it here haven't they fog with the king and queen ability left witches on the left hand side are going to get that tesla and archer tower down um and that is it But let's go ahead. We'll just make sure that the other one was a Town Hall 11v10 triple as well. War events. Yep, that one was the triple. Fog's definitely going to get the triple. So we can go ahead and update the scoreboard very nicely on there. So we did get that dip fail earlier, but we move up to four out of five on 11v10 now. And the score indeed gets closed to 118, 122. So 
OneHive 2.0 obviously still does have the uh, the lead here in terms of stars, but only five attacks remaining to Elite Gaming's 11. And you can see the ratios. I mean, we've used quite a few more Town Hall 10 attacks there because of our better ratio at 10 v 11. OneHive pushing that 10 v 11 game a little bit harder um, certainly is going to be an interesting finish. We do have a few bases here that we haven't even got the stars on, so we're easily going to be able to wrap that up. Uh, let's just kind of have a quick look here. Spartan's Legacy 129 to one hive 130 Spartan's Legacy just had an 11 v 11 triple that is amazing fantastic stuff John Matson, welcome to the stream my friend um, DJ has both of his attacks left in fact Stefan I do appreciate uh, that my friend love from Serbia Spartan's Legacy Hoda is a beast. He took number one base 40% just by Queen Charge. Wow. I look forward to uh, to the recap by Halo as well, just to kind of watch that one afterwards. Um, such an exciting war. I mean, wow. Could still swing either way, I guess. Or uh, how long is left? There must just be a couple of minutes. So this is a different base that we're coming at with the Bowler and Witch combination. Hopefully we can indeed get this one down and then add to our 10v10 game so that our 11s can, you know, push with what they can in order to get them 11v11 triples. Altaf, welcome to the stream, my friend. So, I mean, Bowlers and Witches on the left-hand side are going to get that Archer Tower down and then they should have a little bit of an easier time once that is down, to be honest. Queen is going to get great value along the left-hand side there, especially towards the end when she can get them uh, Wizard Towers and things down. We need the Bowlers to get onto that single target Inferno, which they do. We really could do with a heal spell, I think, as they move to this area with the Bomb Tower and... Uh, wizard tower but it is not there looks like a rage spell is down in place but they're just not moving into it because of that king too distracted and that is going to be disappointing can the bowlers oh if they could have got that single inferno from the outside that would have been so clutch but unfortunately i think that is going to indeed ruin the raid we needed the bowlers to get this this kind of area here these four defenses then we would have been good i mean it's not over yet um unfortunately the single inferno is able to lock onto them witches but if they can spawn enough on the outside here it looks like they're starting to go through the wall not helpful um then we might be in with a shot it's certainly not over the queen still has the ability so let's just see how this one turns out i'm a new subscriber thank you stefan i do appreciate that halo is seeing stream and coc well he streams it each week so and i enjoy his streams obviously spartan's legacy is amazing What? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Flip. I do appreciate that, my friend. I see what you're doing out there. Um, oh, Queen is going to have to use that ability early. Not going to be able to get through to that single target Inferno. So, so close. I mean, what a shame. What a shame. Then Bowler's not quite getting through into that area. Really done a number on him. He is going to have to beat through this wall as well. And then the single target Inferno is going to lock onto the Queen and take it down. Uh, Gamal missed the Queen ability. I didn't even see that. Queen won't have enough heal. Yeah, she's not going to be able to get through that single Inferno. Very, very close. 98%. I mean, surely we will hit that base again afterwards. That means it is another 10v10 attempt that we've had. A lot of 10v attempts gone in there in the final hour, which has really uh, wrecked our percentage a little bit. We had a great ratio. In fact, this morning, guys, we were up to about 70%. We had so, so many coming through. Um, he didn't, the Inferno just wrecked the king. Yeah, yeah, Vic. I, uh, I, I didn't see what quite happened there. Um, let's, uh, let's just have a quick look down the board here. We can take base number two and three for, well, let's say four stars there. That would knock us level. Then we have one, two, three, four, five Town Hall 10s that we can still get these stars on. Um... One hive have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so pretty, uh... Yeah, still anyone's game, to be honest. Still anyone's game. <laughs> That's hilarious, Sheaf. Uh, John, I subbed, I subbed to you. Yeah, I, I know you've been knocking around on the streams for some time, John, so, uh... I was quite sure that you were subbed. 
22.56 in Serbia, so you're one hour ahead of me, it's 21.56 here. So let's move back across to the statistics table then. Let's pull up Spartan's Legacy versus One Hive. Looks like it may or may not have updated. It did update 11 minutes ago, so we are behind on the scoreboard. Obviously, people were updating it before, so... There's not much point in looking at this one per se at the minute because the attacks fly in at the last second so the the war match does then get kind of lost and a mile behind so not much point in looking at that one again i'm very intrigued at the one hive genesis versus dark leader zed one hive genesis there looks like they have put a few extra stars onto the board they do have that 11 v 11 already in 41 percent um, Town Hall 10v10 is a good ratio, obviously a little bit better than Dark Looter Z there. Um, and their 10v11 game is not bad either. 86%, 6 out of 7 stars. So one hand Genesis actually sitting very, very comfortable there with only 50 minutes left. Um, yeah, I am very, very intrigued to see how that one comes out. How do, manage, how do clans manage to fit, get perfect wars? That's 2, 11v11, 50v50, your take on it. Um, I, I, it depends on the breakdown, really. It depends on the breakdown of the of the clan. Farouk, welcome to the stream, my friend. Um, so that is One Hive Genesis versus Dark Looters said. Let's see whether Buy Forever have been able to catch up a little bit on WHF. Um... You know, they've got a couple of extra stars on the board there, but WHF, look at that now. They now have three out of three Town Hall 11 triples. That is amazing stuff. I mean, 100% ratio is just amazing. Show me base number three. No, we're not going to show... Uh, you will get to see that. Clearly, we're going to attack that again, um, but I'm not going to randomly show people's bases off without attacking it, but you will get to see that. We're not going to leave it no starred, so... We will most certainly be attacking it. it. Looks like we do have a live coming in. It is Zeus. So let's move back across so that we can see that one in action. Massive, massive lava loon for this one. 11v10. Obviously, like we were seeing earlier, we did get our first dip fail of the season. Of the season. We've been flawless the last five weeks. So hopefully, we can kind of put that one behind us and just move forward. Looks like we're coming in with sacrificial heroes initially, take out a bunch of them air defense, and then really push the uh, really push the lava loom portion forward. <laughs> no, I, I tend not to check out the clan chat, to be honest, because our guys will be, no doubt, talking strategy, talking about which base they're going to hit, how many base, you know, and I just don't want to put that on stream, you know, some people don't care about that stuff, but I'm not a, um, I'm not partaking in the war here, so I'm not sure as to what strategy they're talking about in the chat at the moment, so I'm just going to not bring it up, and then, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Anyway, King and Queen did indeed take out all of the air defense at the top, so it means them few Lava Hounds can tank for all of the defenses. I mean, look at all of the balloons coming forward. He did have that Skeleton spell onto the Queen, as well as the Lava Pups and that Rage spell is going to finish it off. And uh, the King is obviously... Well, not going to cause an issue here, is it? So as the balloons come forward, notice how the Grand Warden's ability is only just used. One balloon snipes across to that bomb tower. That is all of the defenses down. Amazing stuff. Absolutely fantastic. So that is another Town Hall 11v10 triple. We can update the scoreboard there. Five out of six we now have. Guys, I think I'm doing a pretty good job, actually, in terms of keeping up with this scoreboard. I was a little bit worried that it's the first time I've done it. Um, so I was a little bit worried that I would be getting to update it and it would be a lot harder than what I thought. But we are managing to keep up to date pretty well here. And there we go. 100%, three stars in the bag. It was indeed a base that had already been two stars. So it is only one extra star onto the board. That was a serious beating bellow. It certainly was. That was nuts, wasn't it? I mean, that was a beating in a half. Does anyone, does anyone know the score between Spartan's Legacy and One Hive? We can pop across and have a look at it, but I don't think that we're going to... Oh, we put Mariana Trench up there for some reason. We'll check out that war afterwards. I don't think there is eight... 
59 seconds left, but obviously War uh, Warmatch hasn't been able to update. Limmy, welcome to the stream over there on Twitch. Judo, has DJ used both his attacks? No, he has both of his attacks left. As you know, DJ... Um, getting the 11v11 triple against Itsu last week live on stream. It was nuts. It was amazing. So, anyone, please, can anyone update us on Spartans Legacy versus One Hive? I am dying to know the score. Um, War match just not quite updating, and it should be just about finished there. It should be almost finished. Let's actually have a look at the war we accidentally pulled up in that of Mariana Trench versus Clantanamo Bay. Clantanamo Bay here then, really pushing things forward. They are currently, I mean, the statistics on this one are pretty much even, aren't they? Um, it looks like Clantanamo Bay just having the edge that little bit. One extra 9v9 and the uh, one extra dip attack as well. Where is Itsu playing CWL? He is in one hive reel. Um... So yes, they are currently up against Spartan's Legacy. Dying to know how that one is finishing off because Spartan's Legacy is full of beasts. Yes, it is. Would you look at that? It has updated. One Hive took the victory on percent. I am actually amazed that Spartan's Legacy were able to pull that back. I mean, I was looking at that earlier on in the day and One Hive was so far ahead. Of, of Spartan's Legacy, not that I ever doubted them, because Spartan's Legacy are obviously, you know, they were 5 and up until last week, that is amazing. Credit to One Hive, man, I mean, they always seem to step it up, uh, that was a rematch of the semi-finals last year, so they always seem to step it up against the top guys, uh, so there you go. Yeah, we are obviously only focusing on the CWL and the live attacks. So if we were to move across to the league here, then Spartans Legacy will now be five and one. One Hive getting that extra victory, four and two. Stefan, good night, my friend. Thanks for uh, checking out the stream. Wow, absolutely amazing. I wonder how many people had One Hive in the Pickums versus Spartans Legacy. Spartans Legacy won judo. Are you sure the war match has said uh, said otherwise? Warmatch uh, says that One Hive takes it on percent on that. So I don't know. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> I was a member of Spartan's Legacy in the previous CWL. Fantastic stuff. Really? Wow. Well, Warmatch certainly has done a number on me there then. 133 to 132. Fantastic stuff. Well, good thing for Spartan's Legacy. Let's scrap that then. Eh? We don't need that if it's a... Uh, that said, it was updated and done. I thought the war was over. Wow. Well, thank you so much for updating me. I cannot believe Spartan's Legacy pulled that back. One Hive was so far in the lead. They really were. That is incredible. That really, really is incredible. Good for them. I mean, pulling out the 11v11. COC Shiro, welcome to the stream. Pulling out the 11v11 right at the end there. That's amazing. Spartans Legacy won. Yeah, a lot of people obviously correcting me there. War match, not quite, um, not quite up to date on what it needs to be then. Wow. Amazing. That puts Spartans Legacy 6 and 0. Obviously, last season, Spartans Legacy did beat One Hive, and then One Hive beat them in the semi finals to get into the final. They will be after revenge again, I'm sure, if it does come into a rematch. I mean, we can be, you know. One Hive are a beast. They, you know, they're going to be pushing up towards the top there as well. Hi, Judo. Nice to see you stream again. Nothing better than watching Judo stream on a Sunday. Well, yeah. I mean, I've streamed every single week. I don't know whether you've uh, whether you've missed them or not, but I've been streaming every week here. The CW well. Wow, that is amazing. Then hopefully War Match updates itself pretty soon. Fantastic stuff. So, anyone just joining then? We are into the final hour of Elite Gaming versus One Hive 2.0. Barton's Legacy won against One Hive, yeah. Against One Hive, yeah. We have been corrected a few times on that. I'm sure we'll pop back across. Spartan's Legacy will be champion. Well, they're looking amazing at the minute. Forbidden, though. Forbidden are amazing as well, mind. I mean, I, I can't wait for that matchup. Spartan's Legacy versus Forbidden will be absolutely unreal. So, yes, we're into the final hour. Elite Gaming three points behind, but as you can see by the scoreboard, we do have four extra attacks. The 10v10 ratio is a little bit better, so uh, let's just have a look. 
It looks like one hive have three town hall 11 attacks and then yeah their other attacks are down the bottom there look um they're really gonna struggle there on other attacks they have a, a nine there is that where's their other attack i can't see it oh yeah they have four town hall 11 sorry whereas we have certainly a number there in order to try and get it spartan's legacy had two 11 v 11 triples at the end with one three star against itsu's base and they failed their last 11 v 11 wow that is fantastic. What a comeback, man. I was looking at that earlier in one hive. They were looking good at 10 v 10. Let me tell you, someone of them just attacked a town hall 10 and he got the last star to win. Wow. Thank you for the update. Thank you so much for the update. So we do have another 10 v 10 attempt. This is the base, guys, that we were ever, ever so close at getting down. So, can we make them few adjustments? Will the healers stay on the queen instead of going across to the other side? And let's just see how it turns out. The queen just didn't quite get it on this one, did she? Um, didn't quite get into that single inferno. Actually, it was the ballers. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. It was the ballers didn't quite get into this area to get that single inferno. So, that is going to be the main thing for this one. Obviously, very similar attack. It's not going to be too much different. Poison spell down straight away to get them uh, get them troops down and dusted early on. Notice how we have the heal spell. I do want to see that one. That's exactly what I said on stream as well. We needed that heal spell just as we got to the bomb tower, the wizard towers. It's already down there to help them ballers keep alive. And this is looking a lot more promising, isn't it, guys? The king is in there with the giants. That single inferno is down. Queen looks amazing. Wow. Get Get them three stars down in the chat this is most definitely i mean this base is wrecked just that little adjustment taking the heal spell for the ballers them giants as well was phenomenal i'm calling it already that is a three star any day you like it or not that cannon just about to go down to the baller queen with the ability and healers tell you what that is absolutely amazing puts elite gaming really now in good stead we can update that scoreboard 10 to 30 attacks so bang on 33 percent for the 10 v 10 ratio does knock, knock us down to only eight attacks remaining and it will bump the score up to 120 get some hype in the chat there guys three stars for elite gaming awesome attack it was learning with rock vic getting the three star hype in there as well thank you so much 51 minutes remaining brilliant stuff I'm seriously thinking Bo, which is the best Town Hall 10 war strat on the correct base flip, on the correct base. Let's have a, let's have another look at that. So you will see, I mean, you know, look at this side. As soon as this air defense goes down, there is nothing which is gonna touch the queen. She's gonna get massive value on this side. Um, the Boros and Witches have a little bit of a hard job here with these Archer Towers, but then they're going to be good to go. And he's able to jump to both Inferno Towers quite easily. And yeah, the adjustment was bringing that heal spell just because, look at these two Bomb Towers next to these areas as well, where there's a lot of damage. That's obviously going to do huge damage onto the Bowlers. Good game. Yes, that it was. It was very nice. So yeah, Mr. Flip, that is one of the best attacks i would say it is one hive coming in with another 10 v 10 attempt they really need this they really need this to to put the pressure back on us a little bit statistics are looking quite good for ourselves um so one hive 2.0 really do need this 10 v 10 let's just have a look though they haven't attacked this base on stream anyway so nice use of the minions and archers to obviously create that funnel either side and then the queen coming forward going to probably he does have war breakers but he's going to probably break into this area next to the single inferno get the enemy queen down there as well probably going to let her get into that air defense compartment first or maybe not <laughs> obviously i don't know anything <laughs> Invincible. only three healers i'm going to make that army great attack yeah um, it just depends. Just depends on how much uh, damage that your queen's taken. If you watch, um, if you watch, uh, who was it again? It was Halo actually. Spartan's Legacy. He did a process video last week, and um, for one of their bow witch attacks, what they did was dropped a healer in order to allow extra troops because the queen hadn't took that much damage. They didn't need four healers. They only needed three, and it was very nice to see because everyone just automatically 
you know, goes for the four healers sort of thing, don't they? So, did have to press the Queen's ability there. I'm sure that's not quite what we wanted. Poison, uh, Skeleton Spell, sorry, goes down in order to try and help with them single Infernos. Bola's doing a lot of work getting caught on the Skeletons. We need them single Infernos down, but unfortunately, they just haven't gone down. The ball is getting caught too much on the Skeletons. Looks like the one down at the bottom here will go down. Queen is actually going to get the one at the top just in time as well. So it looks like it could be... I mean, they've got a, a lot of area here, haven't they, is the main thing. Queen doesn't have the healers, doesn't have the ability... Looks like it will actually be a defense. What do you guys think? I think this is a defense. I don't think he can get it. Nice use of the wizard to try and help out, but just not quite getting onto that cannon. Healer has swapped onto the queen, which is interesting. She's got a little bit of time before she gets down here. She will indeed get healed a little bit. Unfortunate for these bowlers. If they can get out in time and help the queen, he might have a chance. But yeah, I agree, Scrum. I think it looks like a fail as well. Yeah, thank you for everyone in the chat that was updating me on the Spartans Legacy score. Um, interesting, we'll flip back across actually to the uh, the war match after this and see if it's updated properly. So what do you know, the bowlers do indeed get out, but I don't think they're going to get over to this area before the queen does. And the healer goes down, so I think the queen is going to struggle here with that expo and two cannons. I think she will struggle to get through this. If healer stayed on queen, he would have had it. Yeah, I agree. I think he's going to really, really struggle here. Um, just because he can't reach the expo, basically does indeed go ahead and quit. So, that is very good. Lisa, welcome to the stream. Good to have you here on board. I was wondering where you were, actually. Um, so that is another fail for One Hive 2.0. Only four attacks left. Uh, 10v10, that is 7 of 23 now. So interesting stuff as we move into the final 45 minutes. Only a couple of attacks for One Hive, whereas Elite Gaming can really take our time here, work out where we want to put. Forbidden as a sister clan of Fake Wargasm or not. Um, I think a lot of when Fake Wargasm retired, I think a lot of the members went to Forbidden. And it's basically, you know, the core group is uh, Fake Wargasm, if, from what I understand anyway. Oh, Lisa, that sucks. I hope you feel better. Would I had a time fail? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go, Zavard. That's what I know, eh? It was a time fail, not a quit. Wow. Oh, what am I doing? Exiting out of the war. Jasmine, yeah, uh, you know, you don't have to just put in the chat, speak my name. It frustrates me when people do that because it basically adds nothing to the chat. Um, and that's actually, I'm going to stop, you know, mentioning people's names that do that. I'll just knock you off of the chat. So, let's let's see if War Match is up updated, actually. Let's go ahead and see if it has updated here for Spartans Legacy versus, uh, versus One Hive, which it has. Look at that. <laughs> It's finally updated. Wow. 80%. 11v11. So they just pulled it out of the bag at the end there. 11v11, didn't they? And really pushed it. I am... Wow. I'm amazed. One half. Look at that 10v10 ratio. Almost 50%. 43%. 11v11. I mean, the stats there are amazing. To not get the victory is... Oh, wow. That is incredible. But so unfortunate for them. Great job by Spartans Legacy, though. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Lisa is here in Elite Gaming, and we do have another live. But this one, Big John. You guys know Big John. Getting the three stars on stream quite regular. Let's see if he can do it here on this dreaded base. We've hit this so many times. Baby Dragon takes a couple of extra hits, but is going to get that Tesla. Um, not going to be worried too much about that. We just need, last time if the healers had have stayed on the queen, we had this base. So let's just see, can they stay on the queen this time in order to help us get the three? Jump spell this time doesn't provide access into that, directly into that compartment with the single infernos like we did last time. Poison spell goes down for the CC troops, delayed on the bowlers that little bit. Queen goes down, oh no! Oh no, the ball is getting delayed there in coming in. Meant that the queen took so much damage. This is going to be a fail, guys. Without the queen, there is no way that this is going to be it. I mean, what do you know? I, who knows? Maybe it does. Judo, who's the number one clan in the CWL position at the moment? Well, I'll bring up the league in a second. Forbidden and Spartans Legacy are, you know, right up there. Amazing. Absolutely uh, crushing it. 
Look at this, the healers are on the ballers. They aren't, it look, they're gonna get that air defense down. The healer just goes down on the right hand side, which is unfortunate. It is indeed going to be a fail. So, so unfortunate, actually. If they could have got that single Inferno, who knows? He might have even snuck it. But the Queen going down because the ball is not in quick enough was so unfortunate. And I can't believe it. That's another attack on this base. So, so this base is haunted. Yeah. Dario says Spartan's Legacy is the best. Yeah, I cannot wait, Dario, to see Spartan's Legacy versus Forbidden. I really can't. I think it's going to be a phenomenal war. Really will be. So there you are, it is going to be a defense for one hive 2.0. Let's see where that other attack was and then we'll try and update the scoreboard. What, there definitely was another attack, wasn't there? Oh, so it was a Town Hall 11 versus 10 dip for one hive. That got them two extra stars. So let's go ahead and update the scoreboard. They are now 120 to 124. 11 v 10, they are now eight for eight. But not many attacks left. Only three attacks left for Spartan's Legacy. Spartan's Legacy. What am I talking about? Spartan's Legacy versus One Hive is how I'm getting confused here. And only seven for Elite Gaming. Can we do it? Can we do it? Nice thumbnail and nice fight going on in the league. Phoenix, thank you. Welcome to the stream. So there you are, 42 minutes left, only a couple of attacks for 2Hive, Elite Gaming still have 7, we really need to focus on where to put them now, we have these 2 bases, which we can kind of claw things back with, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 Town Hall 10s that we need to get out of the way, so, you know, we, we still have a couple of 11v11 attempts here basically, We, we kind of 2 Town Hall 11v11 attempts is what we're going to get, um... I would surmise. I think we're going to have two Town Hall 11 v 11 attempts, whereas one Hive, will they get any here? They are going to have to dip and take one of them. Yeah, they'll get an... Well, I say two, but that's two. We're actually going to have four because we're going to use two, two Town Hall 11s in order to get the three stars, uh, the two stars on these bases, potentially the three. So we do have a couple of an extra 11 v 11 hits. Hopefully we can put that to good use. And... Um, yeah, it will be for an interesting finish here for sure. Let's go back across to the statistics screen then. Um, as you can see then, Spartan's Legacy did get the victory. Amazing stuff. This is the first time watching a live stream and I'm really enjoying it. Thanks for the amazing attacks. Learning with Rock, I do appreciate that. Um, let's quickly have a look at Genesis versus DLZ because as you know, uh, as you've clearly found out from this stream, I'm very much looking forward to this war. Looks like Warbot, as you can see there, 14 minutes ago it updated, so no doubt the score will be different from that as well. But uh, one half Genesis, yeah, they're looking good there, sitting pretty there with that... Uh, with that ratio they've got. Let's have a look at the league then because someone was asking about it. Uh, Forbidden and Spartans Legacy right up there at the top. I mean, Forbidden are going to get that victory over Cold September with them, uh, with them pulling out of the league. So again, Forbidden and Spartans Legacy, both six wins and zero losses. Amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for the stream. I do appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. Um, let's see then, Warzone, who were facing North Watchers, looks like we have a scout attack, we will have a look at that in a second, uh, because North Watchers were doing very well against Warzone, weren't they? So this one is going to be a scout attack, I don't think we're going to be able to get the three star, um, not even the two star, but hey, imagine if we got the three star, 9v11, OP. <laughs> Lava Loon it is, but uh, I tell you what, I can almost guarantee this is for DJ. This is for DJ. He is our Lava Loon expert. He'll be beasting this base, I can tell you that right now. It's one of them uh, it's one of them ring bases as well, which we've seen DJ take out so much. Yeah, we're not gonna watch any more of that because there is another live coming in. And it's DJ himself dipping to take out A10 with the Bow Witch. So we can actually knock the attacks down to six because we used a Town Hall 9 attack there. I think One Hive still have a, a Town Hall 9 attack there as well. Let's see. I mean, there's not a lot around the outside here, is there? The You know, the Bowlers and Witches with them uh, with them healers are going to be able to get down and take a lot of that out. And then the Bowlers through the middle. Nice early poison spell to try and get that down. 
are all of the hive clans connected in some way uh pretty much they were i think um some of them have kind of split off and created their own family of clans in terms of one hive now i don't know the whole ins and outs but uh they all came from the same origin basically wow dj <laughs> I gotta tell you, DJ was the was the guy that taught me the Town Hall 11 versus 10 Bull Witch attack. Obviously, it's a lot easier now, but he did talk me through it back when uh, dip attacks weren't a guarantee. Well, still not a guaranteed, but they're a lot easier nowadays, aren't they? He was the one that taught me the 11 v uh, 10 Bull Witch attack, and uh, as you can see, he's crushed it. He has crushed it. So we can update the scoreboard for that one, then, guys. Six out of seven now. Five attacks left. And the score goes up to 123. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So DJ has used one of his attacks. Ali, welcome to the stream. Looks like one hive have three Town Hall 11 attacks. We have five Town Hall 11 attacks. So all we have left now is Town Hall 11. We've dipped and taken out one of them tens. We have... Oh, I must have looked at this the wrong way, basically. We have uh, three bases of Town Hall 10 to clear, and then uh, these two bases. So we're going to have to, you know, this is going to be a three-star attempt, basically. I mean, sure, this one is as well, but we need to at least make sure we're getting the, uh, at least make sure we are getting the, uh, the two-star. A new rag, One Hive Genesis is beating DLZ. Yes, they are. As you know, I'm a big fan of uh, One Hive Genesis. I keep pressing the wrong button there and bringing up Spartan's Legacy. Updated two minutes ago, this was now. So this is a lot more accurate than, uh, than what it was before. Yeah, again, anyone that puts anything negative in the chat, I'll just delete you straight off. I'm not really interested in, uh, in reading that stuff. I don't think anyone is as well. So One Hive Genesis... One for two at Town Hall 11. So they've already got one of them in the bag. And they're still up on the Town Hall 10 v 10. Show me the dip fail. No, we're not going to do that. Um, we're just going to focus on the live attacks. We have 37 minutes left. And yeah, we're not going to focus on fails. So interesting war that one. Only 24 minutes left in that one. So we will see. Let's move across and see if by forever are pulling things back a little bit on uh, WHF. Still WHF got that nice league. Look at that. 4v4 Town Hall 10. They were 3 for 3 before. WHF, that is crazy, man. 4v4 Town Hall 11 triples. That is out of this world. Absolutely crazy. Fantastic stuff for WHF though. Best of luck to them. I mean, they, you know, they had one heck of a war last week. Judo DJ attack was good, right? Why is he so good? He's just a beast. Again, any of you guys that haven't, DJ Clan Smasher, make sure to drop him a sub over on YouTube. He is an absolute beast. Um, what were we going to look at? We were going to look at North Watchers versus Warzone, weren't we? So Warzone have indeed leapfrogged North Watchers. They've taken the lead now. They're still behind on the 10v10 dips. North Watchers have four extra attacks. Obviously, the thing that you can't quite see from the war, war match breakdown, which you're looking at right now, is how many bases are actually unhit. You know, so if you look at our war, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see that there's a Town Hall 11 that doesn't have any stars, is all I mean. So, the, you, you know, you've got to take this... In context as well, you know, what North Watchers certainly with them extra attacks could be able to leapfrog here and take Warzone for sure. But Warzone, I mean, you know, they're right up there. I think they're, are they third in the league currently? I'm kind of getting lost as to where they are. Yeah, third in the league at the moment there. You can see four for one, absolutely beasting it. Uh, Elite Gaming here down, you know, we're in 10th place versus One Hive 2.0 in 14th really really big war for us it really is a big war this one so this one the dip attack for one hive obviously they have a couple of extra dips if you press the sword it might oh yeah sorry lisa i'm not actually on the internet there i've pulled it through into my so i can't actually uh, edit it i've gone ahead and pre-updated the uh, all the software so it can just pull all the different matches through but i can't then go and actually press it if that makes sense i've just kind of pulled it through 
I'm not explaining that very well, but I, I'm not actually on that internet page. I'm just pulling the feed from the internet page onto my, uh, onto my live stream software. So for this one, coming forward with a mass of bowlers, really going to get deep into the base and then 25 hog riders to come right around the outside of the base. I mean, again, it is a dip attack, so we can we can assume that he's going to get the uh, the three star here. Three heal spells for the hog riders. Only that single inferno on the backside that might lock onto the queen in a second. She is going to leapfrog into that compartment. She does have the ability, so I'm assuming if she gets through this clan castle quick enough, she will get it going to be a close one but I think because of them archers she's going to take it down and yes very very much looks like the three star attack here for one hive 2.0 that puts them an extra bit on the board but you know like we said we've still I still think we've got the advantage here I really do so let's update that scoreboard 11 v 10 one hive are now nine for nine Only two extra attacks for one hive. And then we'll update the score in a second. Navesh, thank you for streaming, Jodo. You're doing an excellent job. Got you subbed and notified on YouTube. Always watch your videos. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Absolutely crushed the base there. So a good three star for one hive. That is going to put another star on the board for them. So 125 to 123. But again, we still have the advantage, I think, here. They basically have two Town Hall 11 attacks left. We have five, and we have a couple of bases that haven't really been hit yet either. Well, one base, sorry. Is In the Dark the best COC war clan? Not in my opinion. I haven't watched them too much, to be honest. I mean, uh, there's a lot of rumours in terms of In the Dark years ago, but uh, yeah, I mean... It depends It depends what you put as the best COC war clan, you know, there's different ways of capping that out. I mean, the CWL is the, the creme of the creme, it's the best of the best, so, you know, Spartans Legacy, Forbidden, they're killing it. They're the best war clans, you know, most definitely, in my opinion. This is going to be close, but who do you think is going to win? John Matson, it is going to be close. I honestly think, I know how... Um, I know from streaming Elite Gaming how much potential we have, and I know that we can get this done. Most certainly, we can get this done. Uh, we're sitting in a good position now, it's just basically getting them five attacks in. I mean, at this point, no attack is an easy attack. 11 v 11, it, there's no attack is an easy attack, and we, we haven't got room for error here, is the thing, guys. We have five attacks, we need three perfect dip um, attacks. We need them done. We need this base two starred and we need this base two starred. There is no room for error. One Hive are going to drop a star. They're going to drop a star because they only have, actually they're going to drop two stars because they have three Town Hall 10s left to take and an 11 only one star. They only have two attacks. So no room for error for Elite Gaming. We're obviously sitting very, very pretty here at the moment though. My favourite is One Hive Genesis. Yes, as you know, like I have been saying quite often, I'm a big fan of One Hive Genesis as well. I really, uh, I really hope they can get it done there as well. Let's go and check out that war actually. Just have a quick look at how they are doing. Uh, so it was still eight minutes ago that it was updated actually. So we're not going to be able to see too much more. Their war does wrap up a little bit quicker than ours. But again, they're sitting absolutely great. Let's again... I'm fascinated with one uh, WHF's ratio at the moment at 11 v 11 game. That 4 out of 4 is amazing. If 3 star got 3 stars from DJ, it's going to be an easy win. Yeah, we're, we're sitting good right now. We are. We're sitting in a good position. Tim, I am not, um, as you can see near the top of the screen there, War Spectator, I'm not actually in this war. Um, so no, I just cover Elite Gaming. I don't compete for them in the uh, the CWL. Wow, Isco, you're obviously very confident on Elite Gaming. Thank you. I, I appreciate the confidence. I mean, we are looking good. We really are. If you look at this, you know, we're sitting quite comfortable at the moment, aren't we? But uh, where is Fog? He attacked a little bit earlier. I don't think he's got any attacks left. 
or do you mean in stream because he was here last week i think he just popped in last week i mean he's probably helping the guys he's obviously you know our leader and and will be helping the guys do what needs to be done basically his priority is helping to win the war not you know being here on stream it was great for him to pop in last week but uh yeah his priority is indeed helping the clan so let's move back across and see an 11v11 attempt then from one hive they basically know that the base here that they're attacking beyonds only has one star so if they're to get an extra star and really push us that little bit extra make us you know potentially if we have a fail they can still get it they need a three star on this base basically who do you think dj is going to attack two or three i think he's going to go for two i think that scout attack was for dj i really do so two hive here then really pushing forward giving what they've got basically they need to try and get a three here a lot of ballers i mean it's a you know ball witch at town hall 11 is a three star strategy your base just defended in the war you're in. It was very close. Who, who, are, you, are, you, who are you talking to then, Mr. Flip? Are you talking to me? I didn't realise we were... Uh... Oh, yeah, war will have started. Never mind. Anyway, guys, getting back to the uh, the commentary here. Looks like he is going to secure the two here. The queen is going to take out this single inferno. Then she's going to lock onto the town hall. But honestly, I don't think it is enough for the three. So it was worth a try. Because even if they got the two, they get one of them extra stars that they needed. Yes, thanks, Mr. Flip. I, I just uh, had a bit of a mind blank there. And uh, yeah, of course, our war is going. So they got the two stars that they needed. It was worth the push. Um, because if they got the three, they then, you know, pushed us that little bit more in case we made an error or something like that, that they could have had a shot. But they do indeed get another attack under their belt there. That was 11 v 11. Let's update the scoreboard. Zero for two in terms of three stars. They only have one attack left. They do get an extra star onto the board. There we go, guys. 27 minutes. 27 minutes. Going to be an exciting finish. It really, really is. Um, let's actually... Let's have a look at uh, North Watchers versus Warzone. Obviously, we were looking at that before. And, um, wow, we have all sorts up here, don't we? WHF. Spartans Legacy, sorry. So, North Watchers updated four minutes ago. Wow, what a close war. North Watchers... You know, they are sitting good right now. They are sitting good. Warzone obviously up in third position in the league. But North Watchers do have four extra attacks. Why is your haircut so cool? Well, my fiance will uh, be loving that you've said that, John Matson, because she, uh, she indeed does my hair. Just keep it short. I am not bothered. <laughs> Let's move back across then anyway looks like we have one of them 11 v 10 attacks look like one hive are doing the best to win the war should be a close war yeah it should be close but we're we're sitting you know really good here really good let's see then obviously the bull witch attack you've seen you know you've seen us beasting with it and we did have that one dip fail it was a 98 percent but um, it's the first one we've had this season. So I'm quite confident here that uh, Beyonce will indeed get the three stars. Nice use of that Grand Warden's ability right over the, the giant bombs there and the CC as well as the single target Inferno. Heal spell is going to be helpful though to help get that down as the ballers push forward. This is where they're going to have good value though. Watch as they knock onto this. Not quite. I thought they were actually going to be at the angle where they could hit onto the cannon but not quite really doesn't matter the queen is uh, still got the ability we've still got ballers knocking around the map it is definitely going to be a triple did i see that there was another attack there maybe not i thought i seen it flash up but obviously i'm just making things up however i am going to put that as a three star attack get some hype in the chat guys that's another three star for elite gaming is most definitely going to be the three so that was 11 versus 10 we can go ahead and update that for us that's now seven for eight 
for Elite Gaming. Yeah, Lisa, I must have just been going crazy. I thought I saw the uh, the live thing pop up. There we go. Great stuff. Only one behind now. Yeah, Vic, thanks, man. Getting that, uh, getting that hype in the chat. Only one behind with them extra attacks. I mean, what can one hive do here? All they can do is put an extra star, you know, probably best to just dip and take one of the tens, to be honest. That's going to be 127. We then just need four stars from four attacks, and we do have this base as well, where we can get two stars. So I'd say, you know, I'd say we're looking very good, definitely. I'm half watching, trying to keep up with the game and Discord too. I appreciate that, Lisa. Don't you worry. You know, like I said earlier, people were asking where Fog was, but uh, the the priority has to be on winning the war. That is, you know, it's great to see you guys. You know, people from the clan pop across and see the stream and things, but priority has to be on winning the war. Waiting for DJ to attack Vams. Yes cannot wait i think he's going for this base number two i think that's what that scout attack was looking good for elite gaming phoenix webster she's hashtag good luck elite gaming thank you so much yes i was going to jump into a replay there but i've got a feeling that the attacks are going to start coming in relatively quick um you know, we can have a quick look at some of the other, the other, uh, let's, I tell you what, we haven't had a look at Mariana Trench versus, uh, Plants Animal Bay for quite some time, so let's see how that war is, is heating up. Mariana Trench now taking the lead, does have an extra attack used, only one minute remaining, looks like this was updated 17 minutes ago though, so, this one will probably, you know, be wrapping up any second, hopefully it updates when the war is won. Who will hit base number three? I don't know. I mean, it could be anyone, to be honest. Could be any of them. You know, Beyonds, he's a beast 11 v 11 hitter as well. So is Grand Poobah. And Zeus, for that matter. We've got, a good, we've got a good set of attackers left at this point. We really do. So there you go. Interesting finish there for uh, Mariana Trench versus Clantanamo Bay. Tanamo Bay do have that extra attack. Not the best statistics in the world. How many Town Hall 11 v 11 will they have? Kudo, does DJ always do Larvo? It's the it's a fantastic army. He, he does it a lot because he's a beast at it. But um, he does Bow Witch and things as well. But I think his 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 baby is Lava Loon. It's absolutely amazing. How do you farm correctly? Wow. Um, it could be at any town hall. I would just say knock in YouTube. You'll find lots of videos. So yeah, Mariana Trench and Clantanamo Bay. We'll see how that one ends up. Let's have another look at One Hive Genesis. Really rooting for them here against Dark Leader Z. You know, they still have the they still have a good lead on uh, Dark DLZ there. They really do. Their percentage is looking good. And uh, yeah, I wish them all the best in them final eight minutes. Let's see, I mean, a lot of these wars are wrapping up pretty much any moment. Let's have a look at North Watchers versus War Wheels, which is actually finished. War Wheels, not surprisingly, getting the win there, to be honest. Obviously, they did beat us here at Elite Gaming not too long ago as well. So, an, uh, kind of not a surprising result. Look at that, though. 60% for North Remembers. 3 out of 5 Town Hall 11 v 11s. Just a Town Hall 10 game. You can see there. 6 Town Hall 10 3 stars. Whereas War Wheels got the 13. So just War Wheels pushing them at the Town Hall 10 game. Obviously, we know how well they can do. Reddit Omega versus Kansha is still got a few hours left. Kansha have pretty much exhausted all their attacks. Reddit Omega now starting to clip things up. Remember when we first looked at this, they were about 20 stars behind. Still 15 attacks left. Um, and if you look, they've got just such a better ratio at 10v10, 11v11, and 10v11 for that matter. So Reddit Omega, although the score is, uh, you know, 10 stars ahead for Kansha with all of them extra attacks. Reddit Omega looking very, very good there. WHF, has this been updated three minutes ago? Wow. I mean, they, they've they gone and lost their perfect record at 11 v 11, but five out of six, guys. I mean, get some hype for WHF in the chat there. That is incredible. I mean, if they continue like this, they're going to be contenders. Let me tell you, they pushed and pushed. Last week, their match was amazing. 
five out of six 11 v 11 that is incredible i mean if we see uh, whf is quite high and the, actually they're only 11th wow i thought they were higher than that i thought they were up kind of fifth or sixth position i don't know why i thought that probably just because of the statistics that they throw out Little Chris says, WHF are beast. I cannot agree more with you on that one. Absolutely amazing. Look at DLZ down the bottom. They are... Um, the statistics that they put out each week, I can't believe they're in 15th place. It is absolutely nuts. And, you know, as you saw, One Hive Genesis really pushing them. I'm a big fan of One Hive Genesis, so I am kind of hoping that they can pull up that victory. Let's see if it has been updated, but it doesn't look like it has. Only six minutes left in that one. Very, very intrigued to see how that one will end up. Just waiting of the final attacks, why don't we show you another Lava Loon at Town Hall 10 whilst we are indeed waiting. I'm a big fan of the Lava Loon at the moment at Town Hall 10, we've had decent success with it. And again, we came out firing at this, you know, I think, I remember correctly when I was looking at the score this morning, I think Lisa will be able to correct me, but I think we were up to about 70% hit rate at Town Hall 10. We got you know, five or six straight off the bat. It was very, very impressive. Judo, I need to go to sleep, mate. Have a good night, uh, school tomorrow. I do appreciate that, John. You have a good one. A nice little kill squad coming from the bottom. Love the use of them wall breakers under rage. I mean, you will see in my videos, it was fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. I appreciate that. Very unfortunate not to get through that one, but obviously, it still works out. We know it's the three star. Getting the single target over on the left. And to be honest, this single target Inferno is not too bad in terms of the Lava Loon. If you can get them balloons onto it easy enough, you're pretty much good to go. I mean, the good thing here is the Queen has the ability. We can get the Lava Loon in in order to try and protect her. Nice to get that Wizard Tower out of the way, though. Once that ability is popped, we can then start thinking about the Lava Loon portion. And again, the single target Inferno is your main priority. You get onto that first thing, so it's really not that big of a deal that the Warbreakers didn't open up that compartment to get into it. As you can see, Lava Hound is going to get bust here, but we've already got an extra few. The balloons are go actually the balloons get it down quick enough. Um, Lava Hound did indeed go down, but it doesn't matter. We still have the other Lava Hound that comes across the screen towards the far air defense, and as soon as that happens, we can then start bringing the back end balloons with that haste spell, pushing right the way. And the main thing is where you can see the wizard towers, any kind of splash defense at the end, you need the spells for that. So then balloons are going to come forward right onto that wizard tower, gets massive amount of damage onto the balloons, but not quite quick enough. Had that haste spell not have been there, that would have most certainly been a fail, but there's just too many balloons now for the defenses to take down. Easy going to clear up the rest of this base. And there you go, a fantastic Town Hall 10v10 triple again. If you're new to the channel, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. I will be recapping all of these different attacks in my recap video. Um, I normally bring a Town Hall 9 and a Town Hall 10 edition as well. Um, and any 11 v 11 triples we get as well. So you will be able to see them in the coming days. But getting down to the final 15 minutes here. Elite Gaming versus One Hive in the CWL Week 6 matchup. As you can see, our stats are a little bit better. Um, I can now see that the scoreboard is indeed going a little bit crazy there, isn't it? Um, let's see if we can kind of quickly fix that. Just kind of pulled the numbers across a little bit, hasn't it? Again, it's the first time I've put the scoreboard up there for you guys, and I really kind of... Um, I really tried to pull in the other wars as well so you guys could see what was happening. You didn't have to go across to other... Uh you know, go across to the to the war and pull up different, uh, you know, internet sites and things to get updated on the scores. I could just pull that straight in. Not going to work tomorrow. Well, that's always good, Lisa. I'm glad that you enjoy it as well. I thought uh, instead of having the chat there and just the big Clash of Clans logo, why not have the all the different statistics, you know? People that tune in that might not be as glued up in the CWL, you get to see our position, our opponent's position, what our record was. We can then flip back and forward between the different wars. Um, again, we, we did have uh, Genesis. We're just about to wrap up with Dark Looter Z, weren't they? Not quite updating for me. 
nine minutes ago so maybe someone knows what the score is they can pop it in the chat i'll be very very interested to see if genesis can hold on to that victory over dlz i really hope they can like i said i have a few good friends there in uh, in one hive genesis so i'm really rooting for them and they've come out all guns blazing they really have for this season So we're just waiting on the next live attack, which hopefully should be going in relatively soon, I would think. Let's just see, though. I'm pretty sure it will come in pretty soon. Just move back across, actually, so you can... Anyone just tuning in can see the statistics and things on the side in case they want to see it. What do you guys think at this point then? I think, you know, I don't want to call it just yet because any clan, any attack at this level is very, very difficult. The pressure is immense, but obviously Elite Gaming, we've kind of got a little bit of a cushion here as well. We have this base that hasn't been, uh, hasn't been too starred at all. We've obviously got a few 11s that can dip and take these 10s. One hive only have that one attack. I'm sure they will just dip and take one of these town hall tens. Um, so that only means we're three behind. With them extra attacks, we should be good here. We will have to just see how things turn out, really. Let's maybe pull on another replay then whilst we're waiting. We've kind of caught up on the other wars that we can do. We'll put on another replay and then we'll move back across and just see how things are looking in the wars. But obviously, oh, we have a live attack. What do you know? Um, it is One Hive 2.0's final attack coming in on our good friend TT using, again, a big kill squad to come in. A lot of ballers here getting really deep into the base and then the hog riders to try and just circle around the back end and, uh, and clean up, which I'm sure he will do. But that is only going to put... Um, one extra star on the board for two hives. So coming in with two golems, interesting enough. One at the bottom here, tanking very nicely and setting off the uh, the giant bomb next to that Tesla. Oh, brilliant use of the two hog riders, though. You have to say it in order to snipe that Tesla off whilst the, uh, whilst the golem was tanking for everything. Such a huge kill squad. I mean, I've mentioned any of you guys that saw my... Um, my Town Hall 10 and 11 Lava Loon video recently, we talked about the differences and one thing I said was that the added hero levels at Town Hall 11, you, you kind of, it makes sense to bring a deeper kill squad because you have so many more uh, hit points in terms of the heroes, they can, you know, they can get, re I mean, just look at this, most of the base is gone, it's done. He has 22 Hog Riders then, just for the back end defences. I mean, it's crazy. The Queen still with that ability. She is going to get locked onto by that single Inferno. He's going to be able to press the ability. Um, but not sure whether he'll be able to get through and protect his Queen. Hog Riders will indeed finish it off though. I mean, that is the power of just bringing in them heavy kill squads. Still has two heal spells as well. Going to swag two heal spells. Wow, there you go. Nick, welcome to the stream, my friend. Good to have you here. You've joined right at the correct time, in fact. We have the final 10 minutes here. Um, so great to have you. Ice Core, welcome to the stream as well. Just joined. So there you go. That is One Hive's final attack then. That puts them to 127. Three stars behind for Elite Gaming. They don't have any attacks left, so we can go ahead and update that. And we can also update the 11 versus 10. That was 10 attacks and 10 successful dip attacks there for One Hive 2.0. We are all very well. So the final 10 minutes of Elite Gaming here. Let's quickly then, let's quickly move back across to the stats page and see how things are looking. That war still hasn't updated for me. I'm very intrigued to see how it is looking. Man, I really have my fingers crossed for One Hive Genesis. I really do. Let's just see. 
Let's just see. Vic's doing very well. Elite Gaming definitely have the advantage. I agree, learning with Rock. I think we're doing very well. Okay, let's move out of One Hive Genesis. Let's go back to WHF. I'm really, uh, really interested in their 11 v 11 ratio. This is Elite Gaming's war to lose. I think they've got this in the bag. I agree, Flip. We've definitely got the advantage here. It's just getting these uh, final attacks to good use because, like I said, any attack up here is high, you know, highly intense. It really is. Uh, there were a few wars that were going to wrap up at the same time, weren't they? What's the cleanup picture look like? Um... What do you mean by that? So we have four attacks. We have three Town Hall 10s, I believe. No, only two Town Hall 10s to clean up. And then these two bases here. So yeah, we're, we're looking really good. Um, yeah, 14 minutes ago that was updated. North Watchers and Warzone. We did indeed see that, didn't we? North Watchers kind of leapfrogged Warzone, which is very, very interesting stuff. I mean, I, I really can't wait to see how that one turns out. So many impressive wars and uh, important ones so Zeus coming in for this base then I thought you know people said that DJ was going to hit base number three I thought the scout was for DJ but it's not it is indeed for Zeus so I mean DJ might even hold on to his attack and then see if uh, you know if we've got it won or something go for an 11 triple at the end who knows so we do have another live attack going in what do you know but coming in with the golem for this one Obviously, the single target infernos are a little bit deeper into the base, so we don't have to worry about bringing giants. We can use the golem in order to tank. One Hive Genesis beat Dark Lucas Z on percentage. Wow! I can't believe that uh, Dark Lucas Z pulled it back like that, but I'm very, very happy for DLZ. Thank you, uh, Josu, for updating us on that one. Genesis won, yes! Brilliant stuff. I will go ahead and congratulate my friend as well after this. I'll drop him a DM. So interesting to have the balloons coming in from the opposite side from where the kill squad was obviously we used the kill squad to take down an air defense then the balloons coming in directly to the sweepers really interesting stuff look at that grand warden's ability brilliant brilliant stuff only seven minions to try and help to clean up here i mean wow it will be a three star i kind of agree this is nuts Look at the damage he has left here. I mean, he does have an air defense over on the back, but, uh, you know, he's got so many balloons. This is going to be a three star. This is going to be a Town Hall 11 three star. Make sure to drop some hype in the chat. I think he's got this in the bag. Would have been nice to have that final haste spell for right now, but it's done. This base is done, guys. Wow. We are nearly always getting perfect wars. Yes, we are. Brilliant stuff. Man, Zeus, amazing. Let's flip across to that other attack then. Um, unfortunate not to see the three star there because, well, we knew it was a three anyway, wasn't it? So let's see how this one's looking. This is a dip attack and it looks like, ooh, the queen is going to get that arch uh, cannon, sorry, get the three stars. So we need to go ahead and update everything that we have on the board here. So amazing stuff. Flaming, flaming hot absolutely amazing so 11 v 11 we are now one for one 100 percent we still have dj 11 versus 10 we are eight for nine oh guys are going to get these attacks in th thick and fast and i'm not going to be able to keep up with the scoreboard we've pulled it level grand poobah coming in now in order to try and gain the victory for us for which it is and now i told you yeah Nice work, Zeus. I agree, Vic. That was awesome. So this base hasn't been hit. Well, it has been hit, but it hasn't been starred. So we should be good here to get the star and indeed get the win. Then DJ can go ahead and try and practice some Town Hall 11 triples. Queen charge coming in and then again, just kind of sideswiping in with the Bull Witch. And uh, you've seen Grand Poobar do this on my channel before. Coming in with that Bull Witch combination, he's going to be able to get down into that con grand, um, town hall compartment with the ballers. Get some donation hype in the chat there for Nick as well. Man, I appreciate that, my friend. I will update the MVP in a second. I have so many screens updated here. You will not believe how much stuff... Um, I have going on right now. 
Anyway, interesting to have the Grand Warden come in afterwards in order to make a snipe for that Town Hall with the Queen, but it does look like he's going to get it. Ooh, it's going to be interesting. The Queen has that ability. He's going to have to press it in a minute in order to get that single target Inferno. Press that ability. Press that ability. <laughs> oh, he didn't press it, but he's going to get it. Wow. Very, very interesting. Let's see if we can get that MVP updated for Nick as well. Awesome stuff, my friend. Let's just hope we get the two star here. Let's just hope we get the two star. I mean, it doesn't matter. We've got the one star. We've got it on the board and we are good to go. Hey, my computer is having a little bit of a meltdown on me, guys, to be honest. There we go. MVP is updated. As you can see, that is the war won for Elite Gaming. We still have one attack left. Um, I am trying my best to update the scoreboard, but it is uh, it is having a bit of a meltdown here, my PC. Eagle Artillery blasted those war breakers. Yes, it did. However, the war is indeed now won. That is it. 128 to 127. Fantastic victory for Elite Gaming. Get some hype in that chat. Only three minutes remaining. Let's make sure we can update that scoreboard whilst we can. Whilst the computer is allowing me. The 11, we're now one for two. Go ahead and save all of them to update all of the scoreboards. And then we're just waiting for that final attack from DJ. Good job, Elite Gaming. Thank you so much, Nick. And again, I do appreciate that donation. I don't know whether we got much donation hype in the chat. I was too busy trying to keep up, up with things. But thank you so much. I do appreciate it. You won that war. Vic, thank you so much. Chris, Lisa, yes. Everyone hyped there in the chat for Elite Gaming. We needed that as well, guys. We did. We've had a little bit of a, a hard streak there recently. And uh, we really needed a win just to... Just to Boost our confidence up a little bit. Getting the double figures in terms of 10v10 is always nice as well because we struggled last week against uh, One Hive. So in order to get that uh, that 10v10 ratio up a little bit better was certainly very, very nice. DJ Triple, you guys are calling it. We got DJ left, two minutes left. He loves doing this, doesn't he? Keeping the suspense. Psycat, welcome to the stream. Sparta, good game, EG. Now we have DJ coming in. He's coming in towards base number four here. So leaving that base with only uh, with only one with only one star. Not even bothered about the two star. We are indeed going to go for the eleven v eleven. Your videos teach a lot to play. Thank you, DJ. Very nicely sniping off the side there. Very unfortunate that that baby dragon isn't going to get that uh, Tesla. Would have been nice. Imagine if we had a single balloon right now just to push onto that. Would have been fantastic, in fact. But it is going to start sniping onto some of the ballers here. They'll be drawn out to the side, but it's not going to be that bad. They're going to take that down relatively easily. CC going down to that poison spell. If someone was asking before as well, does DJ always do um, Lava Loon? And I said no, he often does the Bull Witch. And as you can see... The ball which he is doing. It's looking good right now. Ballers are going to get that bounce onto that uh, wizard tower. Hopefully they didn't actually. But in fact they're going to get the bounce onto the cannon which is better. Queen still has the ability. Look at this. Two giants in order to tank for these uh, splash damage on the back end. Just to help the ballers. We've got the two star. We've got the 70%. And it's looking good. I gotta say, we just need them single infernos down. So nice that we were able to keep onto that queen ability. He's gonna have to press it in a second though. Woo! DJ, you got my heart racing here. I thought he was gonna miss it. Queen, in fact, just quite doesn't get around onto that single inferno. Is that going to be the thing that stops us? I think it is, guys. I think he's got a rage spell left. He's gonna have to use that as they get over there. But uh, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. The only thing that worries me, this wizard tower can't quite knock them. He's going to have to use that rage spell in a second. Try and, there it goes. Try and get them skeletons to help as best as possible. Baller can get onto that single target inferno. I mean, either way, very valiant effort here. Oh, so unfortunate not to get that wizard tower with the bounce of the baller. Very, very unfortunate. I think it is going to be a defense here, but 86%, a very nice try from DJ. But it is indeed going to be the victory for Elite Gaming and getting us our 
third win of the season that now puts us to three and three so fantastic stuff moving on up continuing to push towards that playoff position nice try yeah very unlucky I think this is a triple scrum yeah I thought it was as well it was looking very very good so there you are then the war has been finished out again Nick thank you so much for the uh, the donation elite gaming taking the victory over one hive 128 to 127 amazing stuff let's check in with a couple of the other wars though to see how they have indeed ended up so what will be the final result? Looks like North Watch has still got that nice little advantage over Warzone. Again, this was only updated 16 minutes ago, though. Five minutes left. Plenty of attacks. That could certainly swing either way, but what North Watchers do have the better ratio. Let's, uh, let's knock that one off, and then we can continue to have a look through the rest of them here. So... Mariana Trench versus Clance Hanimo Bay. Let's see, has it updated properly? It doesn't look like it has. Um, yes, finally has. Clance Hanimo Bay getting the victory. I don't think many people predicted that, in fact. Um, but good, good job to Clance Hanimo Bay. They've kind of started to find their feet a little bit the last few weeks. And uh, good for them in terms of, um, you know, getting the victory on that one. Only two 11 v 11 attempts, didn't quite get one, but as you can see, just pipped them on a few different areas. Um, great stuff, great stuff to Clontanamo B. Let's just see, I think Mariana Trench were doing really well in the league as well, actually. Where were they? They look up in fifth position, look. So I don't think anyone, I think that is probably knocked the pickums for anyone. I don't think anyone had uh, Mariana Trench to to lose that one against uh clans animal bay but anyway good job to them one have genesis we did here got the victory over uh dlz as well on percent someone was saying which is fantastic good job to uh one have genesis dark looter z one for five how is that even possible i mean i i, I cannot understand it they are just amazing such a powerful clan that just shows you the talent in the cwl invite to have you know, a record of one for five is just amazing. Has it ever happened that the percentage stars attacks and everything were exactly the same? I, I don't think so. I highly doubt it, Vic. Maybe it has at some point. I'm sure it probably has actually in, in the history of the game. Um, but I don't think it's happened in these leagues. Um, yes, so that one was... Um, one have genesis we've watched north watchers obviously have that little bit of advantage over warzone at the minute war whales we saw wrapped up a little bit earlier got a comfortable victory as i think people were expecting over north watchers so good job to them reddit omega still you know plenty of attacks in terms of being able to catch up to cancer as we can see cancer actually now only one attack left they were two prior to that um, but one reddit omega do have 11 attacks they have a better ratio absolutely throughout 11 v 11 already on the board they've got 11 10 v 10s so i think they're looking pretty good in terms of picking up the victory on that one slowly closing the score over the course of this stream they were about 20 stars behind now they're up to about five stars behind so very good for them nick thank you so much my friend you have a good one um i'm bringing in the wrong uh wrong things here just the one war left then which was whf see what that updates to so obviously i mean i think that's in the bag for whf isn't it look at them statistics guys i mean i cannot i hope power bang does a video on this i really do because six out of seven town hall 11 v 11 triples that's 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 amazing i mean that's like uh, warzone in the first week they had statistics like that but they've you know struggled to keep up with it but that is just absolutely amazing so good job to whf that wraps up the different um the different wars and as you can see this is the league as of last week so forbidden got the buy against um Cold September, they're going to be right up there with spartans legacy still with six for zero warzone um you know, not not looking good for them at the moment, shall we say, against North Watchers. I think North Watchers are going to pick that one up, to be honest. Um, Randy, welcome to the stream. We're just about wrapping up, to be honest. We're just kind of wrapping up the different things here. Yeah, so I think North Watchers are actually going to pick up the victory on that one. Um, okay, let's actually just make sure to uh, 
block you on uh, on Twitch then, shall we? And user. Yeah, have a good one. Idiot. So, where were we guys? I do apologise about that. Anyone that did see the chat there as well with, uh, well, anyone over on YouTube probably didn't see what people were putting there at, uh, over on Twitch. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were saying Warzone struggling there against North Watchers. War Wales are going to move continually upwards. They are in th fourth position, so they're probably going to go up to third if Warzone do indeed lose out to North Watchers. Jake, thank you so much for watching, my friend. Um, yes. Elite Gaming moving up slightly, continuing to push for that playoff position. One Hive, so unfortunate not to get that victory over Spartans Legacy. I thought they were looking really good throughout the uh, throughout the day there. WHF, they're just going from strength to strength, guys. They really are. They're going to continue to push up. They're going to be on our toes here at Elite Gaming. And again, Reddit Omega sitting absolutely beautiful in their war. I can't believe that they've lost three wars so far. This is probably going to put them three, though, pushing up that league as well we've got a lot of good clans on our toes moving into them playoff positions hi judo can you make a difference a video on the difference queen walked queen charge yes i can absolutely do that um but for all of you guys that have been here tuned in i hope you've enjoyed the statistics and the new overlays and things um trying to just bring something a little bit different for you guys again i really hope that you have enjoyed it elite gaming getting the victory so great job to us and if you are new to the channel make sure to go ahead and subscribe i will be bringing you recaps for this in the next couple of days so that wraps it up for this one I've been your host, Judo Sloth, and until next time, peace out, guys.